Welcome everybody. You are here today to learn about creating content that offers FOMO. It's going to be a great time with Peely and myself. Let's hop right in. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever walked into something while you're on your phone? Ever since the creation of mobile devices, our faces have been buried in them. We talk about FOMO or the fear of missing out, and we could probably track it back to the smartphone when we had the little badges on the apps that told us how many notifications we missed or that ding, ding sound letting us know there was a notification. Humans are impatient. We cannot get to our destination without looking at our phone or maybe doing some second screening while watching Netflix. We're always doing something while we're doing something else. And most importantly, we don't wanna miss out on everything. I'm a people watcher. I like to watch everyone. That's why I like larger cities. Maybe one of these people are so interested in an email that I just sent earlier today that they couldn't take their eyes off the phone and walked into a poll or a sign or something, or maybe not, because this video has been out for a while. You'd call me a liar. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to create moments like this for you, not literally for you, but for your content and for the people that consume your content. My name is Hank Hoffmeyer, the digital marketing infotainer. I like to make marketing fun and successful, but I'll let you be the judge of that today. I'm also the senior manager of client solutions here at iContact. I'm joined by Columbina Anzavino, otherwise known as Peely. She is one of our awesome and great graphic designers here at iContact. She did most of the slides you see here today. If you like them, let her know so that she can continue to provide awesomeness and FOMO for our future webinars. Take Hello. it away, Peely. Thank you, Hank. Thank you. Hello, everyone. You made it. Um, you are here because you want to know the secrets, right? You want to create FOMO. You want to create content. That looks like this, right? <laughs> that is awesome. You did such a great job with this. Am I right? Isn't this it? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This is definitely not it, but some people are at this stage where you see heavy drop shadows or like not even cutting out the white background. It's cluttered. You don't know where to look. The information is just everywhere. So clearly, this is a joke. Ha 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 <laughs> Just kidding, okay. <laughs> but for real, you want to turn content that looks like this, like very basic. It's questionable, a Dasani poster to this, right? This is obviously a source from YouTube. I found another YouTuber that compares things, so... I don't want you guys to think like, what? Are you sponsored for Dasani? No. <laughs> so let's talk about some basic branding. Of course, a logo. The majority of you probably are familiar with this. You need to have a logo for your company. Um, colors. Make sure you have a variety of colors. You don't want to just work with one because things are going to look bland. You do want to complement it. And you do want to also have a balance. Like for example, if your main color is red, you still have to compare that, right? Like, does it look good against white background or color is important. <laughs> you don't wanna to go to that other slide. Fonts, you may wanna combine at least two fonts, your primary font, a complementary font. You don't wanna have more than three cause then it's gonna get a little confusing. So of course I made a little note, the limit is, is two. So um, there is a company called Canva, we're not sponsored, where you can organize the basic branding that I just mentioned above. So here's a quick glimpse of what I did for eye contact on Canva. So you see I grouped all the potential logos or for example, the slide that I showed you before where, you know, it had even like a shop local, like you can add all these things and organize it. It's a free tool. You can have all your colors. 
your fonts as well. And then that way, when you're designing and choosing a template, it's easy, it's all there, it's organized. And Peely, what I like about Canva is when I go in and I'm creating something in another tool, I bring up Canva in another tab because when you click on those colors that Peely just showed you, you actually get that what's called the hex code for that or the color code. And then you can use that in other applications rather than keeping it in a note or in Google Keep or wherever. I just go to Canva and I make sure I'm using the right colors when I'm creating assets. So having said all that above, there is another layer to branding. So you want to ask yourself, who are you speaking to? So who's your persona? Who, are the, who is the target audience? Uh, how are you speaking to them? So what type of content, your tone? And of course, you must know your competition. The more clear you are, you have a better chance of creating that FOMO. If you know exactly what problem you want to solve for them, what solution you have for them. If you have that clear target audience, you will be able to create FOMO. So whether it is your website, a new page, a blog post, I'm listing with my fingers, but no one saw that. <laughs> <laughs> or whether it is your social media assets or email, you have to create trust and consistency. So if you follow at least the basics, I know there's more, you guys are probably thinking like, yeah, right. The designer's just saying what she knows, super easy for her. Design is not my, not my lingo. But if you compare at least what the rest of the people are doing to yours, you can see, you know what, maybe I'm lacking around here. But the more consistent you are with your brand, like if your colors are blue and turquoise and then all of a sudden you're doing some weird purple or some weird gradients and then people go on your feed or they see your ads and they're just like, I'm kind of scared to click on this because I don't know if this is like some sort of a fraud or something. So for sure, the brand basics are crucial, they're key. So how do you make all of this happen? Well, for starters, the majority of you guys here probably already know about the base and you're just like, yeah, I already got the low, I got this. But if you are auditing your own brand, you can hire a designer or you can start, you know, dotting your T's, crossing your I's where you're just like, you know, I, I, I do need to hop on Canva, do that free trial and organize my things, pick a couple of templates that I know work best for me. So as I said, either hire a designer, trusty Dundee, Canva, <laughs> Not sponsored, they should, they should sponsor this, that was something, I don't know, a t-shirt. So here I have a list of resources. You probably have heard of them, but I organized them for the sake of all the slides that I went through. So for a logo, if you want to redo your logo, you can always hire someone. There's Fiverr, Upwork, or you can see what Canva provides, or you can shop local, do a quick Google search and see what other designers are around. Uh, for images, of course, I didn't go into images, but imagery is definitely, definitely part of branding. So if you sell candles or whatever service, you do want to curate that. So if you find some free things online, like on Pexel or Adobe Stock, that's not free, but still, if you want to purchase them, that's great. Or if you want to hire a photographer or you have a family friend or someone that you're just like, hey, I like your style of photography then you do wanna take your time and take better content, better pictures that cater to your brand. Fonts as well, you can purchase some, some are free or part of the package. Websites, you probably have heard of Wix, Squarespace, Shopify, social media, again, Canva, <laughs> or Adobe Suite. Take advantage of, like even if you open Google Slides, for example, there's an array of templates. So just look at what's out there and maybe there's something that, you know what, this breathes my own brand. Let me just click on it, change the colors and then your work is cut in half. And then of course, yours truly for email marketing. <laughs> of course, us, the easiest email marketing tool. Um, we have the drag and drop feature. So you can create your email flyers, whatever you would like. And we also have a landing page feature. So Hank, I, I, I passed the baton to you. 
Awesome. And I'm going to start running and get up to speed. And as we go, folks, it's going to get more energizing as we go. We're talking about some basics and the foundation, and we're going to go into more an in-depth conversation. Probably at the end, you'll, number one, feel like it was information overload, but then also all of your questions and all your FOMO has not been totally, you know, complete, right? You're going to have more questions. And it's something we can always do like an ask me anything for. But another thing is layouts. When you produce content, mostly for a website or your email, and maybe to a degree, your social media content, you need to make sure it's laid out in a professional manner that it's easily consumable. Uh, when you're looking at content that's promotional, here's an example. This can be a landing page, a website, or an email. It's important to draw the eyes in and make it easily consumable by having a large hero image, which is a large image. You have a large heading and then a call to action, which is the button. We have the shop, the collection as well. You know, maybe add some other calls to action, like following you on social media. If I land on your page, maybe I'll want to follow you on social media. Or if I receive an email from you, maybe email's not really my, my thing and I'll want to follow you on Facebook provide mm -hmm. options to people. So this is like a promotional layout. Now th this kind of works for social media. Obviously you would not have a nav bar or stuff like that, but you can use a similar layout to this for social media. Uh, and just make sure you're using the images to promote your product or service or whatever you do. Next one is maybe you have a website and you blog, you have blog content. And this is probably not the best example, but give people a reason to look at different posts you have on your website, especially if you're going to send out a newsletter promoting, say, the next or the last three posts on your blog, or it can be on a landing page and you want people to dive into each article, use the featured image, especially on WordPress, have your title or header, a little snippet of what kind of content there is. And then again, that call to action for a blog, it'd be read the article or read more. That's always important to do. Basically, promote the content on your blog, get more eyeballs there. Next, we have the informative layout, and this is informing people more about the products and services you offer. Here, you want to use images that Peely said, and it can be ones that you take of your own products and services, which is recommended, or you can use stock photography if you don't have any or you know you need something that's related. That is okay. The only thing you want to do is get people to consume the information so that they feel like that they want to learn more or convert at some point. Maybe you're in e-commerce. Maybe you have a Shopify store because you just went and set one up because Peely told you about Shopify. Just kidding. Uh, you can have an e-commerce layout where you're going to highlight your products and services and make them stand out. Look at the text overlay on that hero image. We have different products and services. We have buttons that are getting people to click through. And then maybe for some reason, somebody's not ready to buy, you know, whether it's a hat or a dress or a purse that's in this example here, we have other items at the bottom. Contact us, frequently asked questions, log into your account if somebody has an account. This is a good example of an e-commerce layout. Again, this can be email, this can be on a website. You just take the content and change it around as you need. People that speak English for the most part read from left to right and down. I have to spell that out because recently I, you know, I heard that you know if you're reading in Chinese, you don't read left to right and down. But for the most part, a majority of the world reads from left to right and down. If you have a long email, if you have a website that's pretty lengthy, use this format to drive people down the screen, get them to start scrolling and looking at the other content. You can use images, buttons, and a variety of different content in that Z pattern. Or maybe the inverted pyramid is more your style. Have a large image that speaks to your product and service, whatever you're offering. Then as it goes down, it kind of narrows. You have some text or a headline and then some text and then the button, which is the smallest as far as width, it draws the eye down. It's kind of magical. You wouldn't think that if I didn't point that out. You look at the top and you go, down. Your eyeballs just gravitate downward. That's why it's called the inverted pyramid. Now, let's check out some specific items to help you get some more FOMO. Let's talk about building blocks. 
what you want to do is make sure you're designing. Designing your content is key. You know, for the most part, a lot of your content is going to have a logo. It's going to have a header, a hero image, supporting copy, and then maybe some URLs going to your products and services or social media. Now, I know you might be thinking, Hank's leaving out social media quite often. He's talking about websites and email. We're going to dive into social media a little bit more later on. We just were not sure how savvy this audience is going to be on social media. And we could probably do a two to three part series just on social media, but we want to give you some information about that. And that is coming. That is our FOMO. You don't want to miss out. So we want you to stick around. Sure. You can use text, whether it's in social media posts, on your website, a landing page, or an email. Eh, it gets to point across, but if you take a look at similar content in a different fashion by using background colors, background images, different font colors, your logo, a different color button stands out a little bit more. So you want to create variations of what you're doing. And we're going to talk later about creating different types of content and why it's important. And while you're looking at all this information and you're saying, oh my God, now I got to create different variations of everything. It's okay. Get out of your comfort zone. We don't want you to go on a Friday and say, I need to slap together an email, send it out. I'm going to do a post really quick for Instagram. I'm just going to take a picture of my rug and send it out. Uh, just put hashtag carpet. We want you to get out of your comfort zone and either start doing things yourself or hiring somebody to do some of the items we're going to talk about today. Because the best advice I can give you is to get out of that comfort zone, do more, create more, try new things, and test. Find out what works for you and for your audience. Make sure to design with purpose. Again, don't just throw something together because it's Friday, three o'clock, and you need to get something out. Think about it. Oh my God, I'm in burnout. I'm always used to sending the same type of emails. Use holidays, seasons, and other opportunities to add some flair to your email. In the fall, you can use more neutral colors. During the holidays, you can add snowflakes to your logo, your images. During the summer, use this, you know, use pictures of the sun or something like that and use yellow buttons. Think outside the box and do what works for you around creating different content because there's nothing worse than being stagnant and sending the same content out over and over hoping for a different result. What is that? The, the, the description of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Don't yeah. let that be you. We're here. We have professionals on staff. Peely and I are, are more than ready to answer questions uh, if you have them on how to do things, when to do things, and maybe, maybe you have an opposing position on something. We want to hear that. Let's dive in a little bit more around designs. What you want, make sure you're taking it further and, you know, a well-designed piece or content does not have to be created by a professional. It just needs to look good, folks. That's why Canva exists. That's why eye contact exists and we have a drag and drop editor. And did you know we do provide free stock photos? Yes, we do. Look into that. Again, you don't have to be a professional to do things right, but if you hire somebody maybe to help set up your branding, that's fine. Don't feel like you have to go on your own to do all of this stuff. Vermont Food Bank sent this email back in 2016. I really love the gradient button. I really love those social media icons. It's really just what's in style now, right? They took heed. They looked at that email. This was years ago and they changed it. They said, let's go with some more flat graphics, flat colors, update the social media icon. Sometimes you just need to take a look at what you're doing and make some updates, but your messaging is going to be the same. Vermont Food Bank, what do you think they want you to do? Donate food or donate funds to help their cause. Content's going to be similar, but the look and feel changes up a little bit. An important thing is your customer experience, your prospect customer. I'm talking to everyone. Pretty much what you're doing is you have an audience. So it's your audience experience. Their experience matters. I recently went to Savannah, Georgia to visit my niece and I went restaurant hopping, if that's the thing. Um, I think I gained like 20 pounds. 
I recently just did a TikTok in another video around my experiences at different restaurants. I went to one that had mediocre food, but had stellar service. I went to one that had really bad service and really good food. They kind of, in my mind, equate out. I'll go back to the restaurant that had pretty good food and excellent service because of the service. But if I had a bad service and the food was really good, I may not go back because I didn't have a drink to wash down my food with. I didn't get condiments that I asked for. I asked for ketchup and I ended up with a box. I don't know how that happened, but by meal, the experience just was not there. Make sure you're providing the best experience through your content is what I'm getting at. First of all, anything you create on, especially the website, your website or an email needs to be mobile responsive and needs to look the same on a computer, tablet, and mobile device. Long gone are the days of when you take your phone and you zoom in to read something and zoom back out to scroll up a little bit. Improve your design. Not only change up to meet the times and make sure you're using the right icons, the right colors, the right gradients, those things. Make sure you're using something called white space or negative space. And I'm gonna talk about that in detail in a moment. But if I was to show you this page, does this look well laid out? And does it have a lot of great content? Do you think it's with today's times? Would you be more willing to convert on that website or the website on the right? I'm not in the market for shoes and sandals, but it's starting to get warm in here in North Carolina. And you know what? Those sandals in the middle, they're kind of appealing. Maybe I would click through to see what they're all about. And more importantly, what the pricing is. It's all about the experience, not necessarily while I'm shoving food in my mouth, more of how does the content make me feel whether or not I'm ready to buy something. Therefore, design branding is important and it creates that FOMO or fear of missing out. Maybe I'm not interested in reef right now, but I know summer's coming. I know I saw an email with sandals. Maybe I'll look for their next email. That's what's important. When we talk about negative or white space, Apple always does a great job of letting their products speak for themselves. Here we have a MacBook Pro, and for, for the most part, people know what the MacBook Pro is. They don't have to provide you with so much content to tell you what, the, what it is. They give you a little bit of information. They have a button to click to buy through. Simple enough, they let the product speak for itself, and there's not a lot of clutter. You have negative space, which again, it's not white, but it's negative space here, it's black. And they're using black and white photography to draw your eyes in and, and, and convey emotion, which is another thing they're doing here. Keep your content simple. It, more is not always better. It's always good to remember that. All right, I got a checklist for email, then PLA is gonna give you a checklist for web and you know other areas. But when you're sending emails, before you hit the send button, and David, I, I saw you join us earlier. I see you're on and you stopped into the eye contact office. You said, hello. And I think you've been on our last few webinars. I appreciate your loyalty. Thank you for being here. David, here's what you need to do before you hit send. And everybody else too, check your text to image ratio, number one. You wanna have images to break up the text. Should be about 60-40, 60% text, 40% images. It's also important because if you don't meet that ratio, your email may be flagged as spam and people will not see it anyway. Mobile responsive, yes, for email, this is important. I do not want to zoom in and out of my iPhone. Eye contact takes care of that. Therefore, the folks that are not using eye contact, that's probably more advice just for you. And then you have the email size. Yes, size matters with email. In other words, the text goes into a file and there's a size of that file if you were to export it. And if it's over, I believe 102 kilobits, it gets shortened. In Gmail, you'll see this, it'll say, read the rest of this email or you know, read full email. An important thing to note here is that the unsubscribe button can be cut off if your email is too big or too large or too long. Try to keep it short and concise. You could break up an email into two emails. Gives you another reason to send more emails. Uh, make sure you check your subject line before you hit send so that um, you get people's attention. And then use the pre-header, which is something uh, that is like the extension of a subject line where you send an email and in bold, you see the subject line, shop today, 
20% off. And then a preheader would say free shipping on orders, $50 or more. It's an extension of your subject line. And I hand it over to Peely to go over design checklist for other areas. So for like, before you launch to web, you do want to make sure that you have your H1. There should be one, not two, <laughs> per page that you, that you launch or want to do. Make sure that you add your alt text for the images. Again, for things to be responsive. Like this is more the visual side, guys. Like this checklist, like, okay, I'm done. I'm ready. These little technical moments. Spell check, of course, you never know. And then the squint test. So Hank, I'll let you take over the squint test. All right. So with the squint test, I don't, I don't, I think I heard this somewhere. I don't know if I can coin this or not, but I loved it when I uh, thought of it. Uh, so anything you're creating, do the squint test, take your content, step back from it and squint, make, make the screen blurry. And if your content kind of resembles the finished product and it looks similar to what you've created and you can still make out kind of what's there, you won. If everything's jumbled together, colors are blurring together and you cannot even tell there's text yeah. somewhere, you might want to add more quiz time, folks, white or negative space. I heard four of you. Thank you. If All right. it's <laughs> off when you're squinting, then there's something wrong. Yep, exactly. Or you need to get your eyes checked that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about experiments. Uh, it's not only with email marketing. If you've been on an eye contact webinar in the past, almost anytime I talk about email marketing, we're talking about experimenting, but this also happens with websites. And here you'll see that uh, testing is basically taking two or more versions of your content and testing it out. You could do this in e email with eye contact. You could do a split test. You can test version A versus version B to see which one does better based on say the subject line or the content. You could take a landing page version A versus version B and there's tools to measure that. Or you just look at your Google Analytics traffic to see which one got more or more clicks, conversions. And you'll notice my little stat here from Litmus around um, how many marketers, 39% do not test their broadcast or segmented emails. And on the website, it's about the same. 33% of companies uh, are running A-B testing on a website. So um, you want to make sure you're doing that because with email, I always say it gives you free opens. It gives you free conversions. By sending the best content to, you, to the majority of your audience, you're going to win more. If uh, I went to Internet Summit, which is a conference that is throughout the country, but they come here to Raleigh last year, and there was a discussion and a um, presentation around testing of websites, and they went through some examples of what companies changed and what kind of metrics they had. It's interesting to see how little just changing the color of a button or the uh, placement of a button or a link or a header or something can do to move the needle on conversions. Compare variations of your campaign to determine which one effectively engages with your audience. And also, you know, you can test items like with email, your subject line, your pre-header, which I mentioned, the from name, you know, who you're sending it from, the from email, and then in general with websites, social media, your content, images, and design. How are things looking? Placement of your navigation bar, your logo. Does your logo perform or, or does it resonate more in the, when it's in the center of the page, on the left of the page? Try that out. You know, if it's an offer, try spelling it out differently if you can. And choose the winning email or the page manually, automatically. Most tools allow you to do that. And I would say always test at least two versions, if not more but don't test eight different versions of an email. You're probably not going to learn anything and only test one element at a time. Otherwise you will not know what moved the needle. The most important thing when it comes to creating content that offers FOMO is value. If Peely and I don't provide value to you today on this webinar, you will not come back down the road. You will not come to a future webinar. We want you to come back. And even if it's just for Peely's design, you know, because she's trying to create FOMO through design and we have to talk through these slides and we have to be very engaging. When it comes to value, I like to look at it as being like a bank or using the bank analogy. Every time you do something, every time you send an email, 
post something on social media, create a new website page, you're doing something. What you should be doing is creating deposits. Now this will be offering value or information, not selling right away. You're gonna provide information, you're gonna provide details, you're gonna provide the best experience, videos, images, anything you can provide to them, just keep making those deposits. Then at some point, you can take a withdrawal or ask for a withdrawal. That's where you ask for the sale. That's what nurturing is all about. You've always heard about nurturing with sales and marketing. You want to nurture to a sale. Maybe some people will buy from your first email or when you first land on your website, but a majority, I think somewhere in the 80 percentile of people that visit your website or read your email are not ready to buy. It takes, I think the new one is 12 touches. I think it is. It used to be seven or eight. Now it's 12 touches before somebody buys from you on average. If you're doing better than that, great. I applaud you. But some of us really have to work for that conversion. Make sure that you're not overdrawing. You're not, you need to make more deposits than withdrawals because you don't want to overdraft your value bank account. And if you have not read it or you're looking for a good book to read, I highly recommend the book by Gary Vaynerchuk, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Value, 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 sell. It's pretty much what that's about. Highly geared towards social media, but same message resonates with email marketing. Highly recommend the book. It's actually right here. It shows you I read it recently again. Um, it's a great book. Go ahead and read it. All right. We're what? halfway through. I think we're doing some good time. Do I have your attention? If you're typing an email, if you're on Instagram, or if you're talking to your boss, pay attention. I want you to come back, reel in. Hope, hopefully I have your attention because that's what we're here to do is give you value. And if you weren't paying attention, I guess we're not doing a great job. But more importantly, you need to get your audience's attention. That's what we're here for today. This is the exciting part of the webinar, hopefully. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, let's talk about how to get people's attention in email, on the web, and in social media. Can I get a round of applause, virtual round of applause? We're going to talk about the big three today. Let's jump right in and talk about email marketing. All right. The first thing people see is the subject line. When you send an email, that's the first thing people are going to see. Personalize the subject line. You should be gathering emails and the first name of subscribers, whether it's on a tablet, handwritten, or a form. And we do have a form builder and you can throw a form on your website or link to it, whatever you want to do, throw it on a landing page because we have landing pages too, and get somebody's first name and get their email address. Then when you send an email, you could say, hey, Hank, we have new sandals on sale. Remember Reef? They're going to remind me that they have sandals on sale because they know I like sandals. And they're telling me and they're shouting out my name. If somebody shouts my name out in public, I'm going to turn around. Same thing in the inbox. Do the A-B testing. Take one version of an email and test it against another. Use emoji in the subject line. The example here shows some emoji. Those stand out. When you looked at the slide, that's probably where your eyes went, were to the ones with emoji. No matter how many times I say it, not enough people do it. You'll see the spike in usage of emojis and email go up over the holidays and then go back down after the holidays. It's like everybody remembers around the holidays, use all the emojis and then they stop using them. Same thing with social media, use emoji. The subject line should be about six to 10 words in length. Why? Because it'll get cut off in the inbox. People will not see what it is. I'm looking to see if any of these here are cut off. No, everybody did a good job here in this example. But if it was any longer than, say, the first one from scrapbook.com, it may get cut off and I may not know what they're talking about. And for the win, use that pre-header text, which is the non-bold stuff that you see after the subject line. Use that real estate so that it's effective and it's an extension of your subject line. You might remember in the past, it would say, can you view this email? Click here to view online. That was a waste of valuable real estate. Switching right over to the websites or, or your web, you make sure that you know everything's designed okay. It's good. First thing people see when they go to your website, especially the main page is your logo. They're gonna see your hero image or banner if you have one your headings and subheadings, as well as your call to action, as long as everything's above the fold. This is kind of a decent example here. Everything looks clean. There's an image. 
call to action, you got your, your header text. Those are the fundamentals when it comes to designing a page. Now, it's hard for us to go in and tell you what to do when you're looking at websites because there's so many different types of websites out there and so many different types of industries that we're talking about. So your logo hero banner, uh, your subheading and your call to action. And then pro tip, we've already, I think, beat this to death, white space, clean looking. This way can, people can see what's going on. Use that squint test, folks. All right, moving into social media. This was supposed to be muted, but it's not. <laughs> All right, let me pause that. All right. For video, you want to use a strong hook or opening. And that's what this gentleman was talking about. If you're putting, say, th this is mostly for video. S images really comes down to the captions at the bottom. But in the first few seconds, you need to get people's attention. It has to be that hook. Why I should buy from you. Why your product is great. Why should I use you as a consultant? There has to be that hook. Otherwise, people are going to swipe away, right? Make sure you use thumbnails when you can. On Instagram, you know, when you're doing a story or reels, you could pick your thumbnail. Same thing with TikTok, you can pick the thumbnail. YouTube, more importantly, you can create a thumbnail, upload it and use that. That's what gets people to click and to watch your content. Then the hook gets them interested. And then the rest of the content is just gravy. Uh, make sure that you use sound as well. Not only just sound like talking, use, trending music and all those kind of good things. So you got your hook, you got your thumbnail, subtitle, sound, and pro tip, there's an app for that. If you're looking to do something like add subtitles, add graphics, add overlays, create thumbnails, there's tools out there. Canva covers some of this. Uh, you'll be uh, ready to go with so many apps and I'm gonna recommend some things later on. And keep in mind, humans are visual by nature. Use images and videos anywhere and anywhere, you, anywhere and everywhere you can, in email, in social media, on your website, use images and videos. Why? Right now, 80% of marketing is video. People are consuming video in mass. And another important item is 95% of information received in a video is retained versus 10% in text. Remember a while back, I showed you just using text blocks and say email or on your website, but also putting some color around it, that helps. But video helps out even more folks. And I know some people are hesitant to start creating content. There's sites that can give you stock video and then you can do simple text overlays. Uh, Offio is something that Peely and I have been checking out lately. I think it's like Canva and something else blended together. Um, and it works really well, allows you to do like animated pictures and text and graphics. Uh, it's pretty cool. I think they have like a lifetime deal going on for like $97, uh, which is pretty cool. But to hit the subject home, use more video. We want to have people stop swiping. How many of you watch Dora the Explorer? Or maybe you don't want to admit it. Maybe you have kids that do. Hopefully you know a who Swiper the Fox is. We want to stop Swiper from swiping our phones, or we want people to stop swiping away from our content. <laughs> content is more accessible than ever. People have, what, a minimum of two to three devices. Could be a laptop and a phone, laptop, iPad and a phone, Apple TV. You can consume so much more content. There's just so much content, so many ways to consume it, and there's a lot of noise. We don't know what to do with all this content we have. Every time we log into email or our social media accounts, there's so much new content. It can be overwhelming. How many of you read or watch every piece of content you come across? How many? Piece. <laughs> I don't think we physically can, right? I don't, every piece. I don't think we physically can get through all the content that we look at. If we watched every TikTok, every Instagram video, every email re received, there is no way we can get through that content. That's why I want to implore you, do not create so much content that you're going to overload your audience. You have to create that value. And, and Peely was mentioning earlier, you know, that 
KLT, that know, like, and trust, right? They're going to see your brand. You're going to have your colors, your logo, your font. They're going to say, okay, that's who that is. And I'll see it again later. I'll remember who you are and I'm going to trust you. Then you want to create the like factor. I like that you're providing me valuable content, but not too often, right? And you got, you know, then you got the, the no, I know you because I've been consuming your content and I can't wait for more of it because you're following our tips today. Do what's right for you. Send as much content as what's right for you. Now we're going to talk about video content here. Mostly test out short and long posts or long videos. They say 15 seconds is the sweet spot right now. But then again, if you're doing a product video, you probably do want to go longer and provide more information. You know, I call it nuggets and meals, provide people with little nuggets of information and then give them the full meal. Don't forget to add cliffhangers. Maybe what you want to do is create a video and don't finish it and then give the answer later. And don't forget, you know, video is king. You want to inspire, educate and entertain your audience. Then you also can create behind the scenes content. Maybe you're struggling to say, well, I don't have a lot of content to create. If you make candles, do behind the scenes content of making the candles and the process of doing it. And my wife does some videos around gardening and her processing of the herbs and stuff she does it. I really don't have interest, but people tend to like that. It's kind of like behind the scenes content. And I just alluded to it, but use series or parts. When you send an email, tell them what's coming up. Hey, this is part one and two part series. Next week, next month, we're going to tell you about this way you create that FOMO. You probably see this if you're if you're on TikTok, there's always part one and you always have to go to the other, the person's account and go to part two to watch part two. They're doing that so that it's giving them favor with the algorithm. Take advantage of trends, trending music, trending topics, use relevant hashtags, folks. Uh, make sure that if you are struggling for content, use Reddit. Even if you don't have an account now, go create one. You can go in and search for email marketing and then look for hot posts, top posts, top posts in the last year. Look at what people are asking on Reddit and it'll help you create content that matters. You probably find something in your industry. All right, so use Reddit for content creation and we cannot forget about user generated content. If you have customers that have used you, if you're a consultant, if you're a manufacturer, if you're a retailer, uh, if you are a brick and mortar store, you have customers, get content from them, ask them to do something. Um, actually, I have a challenge for you. If you, a majority of the folks on this call today are using eye contact, the first five people that send us an example of their email that they created in eye contact to drag and drop editor, I'm going to send them an eye contact sticker. You see it back here. I wish I had one right in front of me, but I don't. Um, let me see if I can grab one real quick. I forgot where I put them, but I have a whole bunch of stickers. I'll send you a sticker or a couple. So go ahead and show us examples of user-generated content. I'm asking you for it. You should be asking your subscribers and your audience for it. TikTok, so hot right now. This is a platform that everyone needs to be on because the algorithm is so favorable and it just gets to know the users so well, and it serves the content they want. That's why it's doing so well. And you might say, well, Hank, that's for 12 and 13 year olds. Well, yes, that's how it started out, but I'm on there. There's uh, lawyers. I've seen uh, judges. I've seen a bunch of different professionals on there that are using TikTok and they're using it effectively. And more importantly, whatever you put on TikTok, you can always cross post on Instagram. Keep that in mind. All right, when you're doing video, you want to use subtitles. And this is when text is over your video. Now, YouTube adds them, but people have to turn them on. It's important to do this because a lot of times when people are second screening or, or binge watching something on Netflix, they are looking at video, but they have the sound turned off. Um, a few tools I use to edit video slash use um, subtitles is Camtasia. Camtasia allows me to capture my screen on my computer and make videos from that. Final Cut Pro is just for normal video editing, Adobe Premiere, same thing. DaVinci Resolve is like a free version of Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. 
iMovie that's on your phone, you can use that. LumaFusion is a great video editor on the iPad or iPhone. And Clipscribe is great if you want to create subtitles for your video and bake them into the, uh, the video itself. And then there's an app I use, it's just called Captions. I think it's like $40 for the whole year, uh, but it gives you the ability to do captions for vertical videos only. I see a lot of uh, questions coming in too. Keep those coming. We want to answer those. Don't be afraid to recycle and repurpose your content, folks. If something is evergreen or you created it a year ago and it's still valid and good now, reuse that, recycle it, re repurpose that. Let me give you a good example of being able to create a bunch of different content from one medium. Let's say you create a video. I create a video on how to create a uh, strawberry candle. And I go through the process of how to make it. And then I have a call to action to buy it at the end. I could turn that into a blog post by grabbing the transcription, take that transcript, cut it up and do social posts from that along with some images and snippets of the video. Therefore, I created one piece of content and I turned it into three or four other pieces of content, depending on where you want to share that. Plan and organize your content. Uh, Peely, how, when it comes to your, like say your, your design content, how do you organize and plan your content? Well, sometimes with the graphic design brain, what I would like to do is first get inspired. So going back to the first slides, it's really knowing, okay, in order to organize my content, what do I want to post and what do I want my audience to go through? So then from there, I will curate what the best plan of action is, like what my marketing strategy would be. But Hank, add to that if that's not a valid. <laughs> yeah, well, and create a calendar, whether it's a whiteboard like I have over here that you can't see a content, you know, paper content, dead tree calendar, I called it, um, a diary, whatever it is, use your Google calendar, plan out your content. And also don't, don't forget to organize your content so that you can go back and pull from your library of content down the road using that repurpose and recycle. It is important to plan that out. I keep saying, you know, on a Friday, you're going to send an email at three o'clock. You want to plan on Monday, design on Tuesday, test on Wednesday, take a break on Thursday, Friday morning, look at it with fresh eyes and then send it out on Friday. This way it's optimal. You're creating that sense of FOMO developing that KLT and winning all around. Now that you have a fear of information overload, because that's probably what happened today, let's recap some of our main themes and then hop right into the question. So get your fingers ready and warm them up. Uh, first thing is make sure you have proper branding overall in general, you know what that means. Know that design and experience matters, what type of content and how you lay it out really sets the stage for how people are going to interact with your content, test your content and adapt it over time, provide value and offer engaging information, provide that value, put that money into banks so that you can make withdrawals later. And remember, visuals are king. Don't stick to only text. It's important to use great images as well as great video. People should get excited when they see your video. And if you do what we discussed today, people will not want to miss out on your content. And maybe they'll make the next highlight reel of people walking into things. Now go create some FOMO. Thank you for your time. We want to hop into the questions. I know there was a couple, so let's go ahead and hop in. But first, thank you so much. Don't forget to send me an example. It could be a landing page in iContact as well, or an email you created in iContact. It can be a screenshot or just find a way to forward it to me, uh, send it to, uh, I believe it's um, uh, webinar at um, icontact.com. Uh, I'll ver verify that in a moment, but I think that's what it is. Uh, definitely send you some stickers and we'll figure that out. So let's move into Q&A. All right. Always have to sift through where everybody's from. Uh, I think I might answer it already, Sharon, but yeah, it's recorded. There's, I don't know if Sharon's still here. <laughs> there's um, Amar Sharon. Uh, who said, do you feel, how do you feel about black backgrounds rather than white? I've been using black because I think it's easier to read white text on black and color pops more. So my two cents on that would be like, if you're designing for digital, like right now there is a thing where you can turn it to black mode, which is great. So if you're designing directly to that, that's, that's valid. Um, 
for white, I mean, again, with the whole black mode, dark mode, sorry, white is more of a thing of like uh, for print and stuff. It really depends what your what your brand is to give you a more like a, a more you know catered answer to that. So it really depends what your brand is and what message you're trying to convey. Hang, if you have anything to add to that. I think it really comes down to you, your brand, and how you feel people are going to consume it. In a story, and they use a lot more blacks and, and a lot more black and white colors. In other words, a black and white image is not going to look good on a black white background. You'll see Apple use both white and black. I think it just comes down to the design of what you're creating, whether it's social, web, or email. Um, you can either stick with one or the other, or you can try both and see how they work. A-B testing, there you go. Then we have Robin David Davidson. Knowing that it takes eight to 12 touches, how do you keep content fresh and creative on each touch? I did not understand the eight to 12 touches. So Hank, if you know what that means. Well, so in other words, you find my website, find me on social media, you're not ready to buy. And, there, and, and the rule of thumb now is at least seven, but up to 12 touches. In other words, I have to send you a couple emails, see me on social media, go back to my website, then you're ready to buy from me because you're going to develop that trust and that like, and then there's also competition for the most part. In other words, you need to create content to keep people coming back to want to buy from you at some point. And it's going to be, you know, around that nine to 10 touch point. It could also um, be a revisit to your sitemap, like depending on what your plan to, to sell is, and you know, like, hey, it's been a month and my numbers aren't going up, like when I launched the first month, for example, then revisit what that step is for, for the client that potentially, it's not that your content isn't fresh and clean, maybe it's not easy enough for them to trust enough to click it. So you have to rethink right. what messaging are you using? How are you catering? How easy it, is it for them to access it? How many steps do they have to call me? Do I call them? Do I have the consent? Like those types of questions. Yeah, and you need to figure out how often you want to produce content for, say, social media. And I and I know it's you know the more the better in a way. But like with emails, if you're sending every week and you're an e-commerce company and you only have one or two products, it's not worth sending every week. You send once a month. That'll help you with your creation. With your posts, instead of posting five times a day, you post one time a day. Uh, or find somebody that can help you create more content. Hire an intern. You know, there's companies out there that'll do content Fiverr, go to Fiverr and have somebody create 100 social media posts for whatever they charge. Uh, but planning is important. Just open a spreadsheet, use Reddit, uh, use other tools, say, well, what are people what do they want to know? And what is their challenge? What is their pain point when it comes to what I do, what I sell, what I offer, what I want to do and create content around that. Good example is I work with a client that sold eyeglasses and um, I don't know how many people are on today's webinar that have glasses, but how often would you buy glasses? What once a year, maybe once every other year, would I want to receive emails every week trying to sell me a pair of glasses? You know, that might work if I want to actually, I have a pair of my car, a pair of blue ones, right? So yeah, I'll buy maybe two sometimes uh, of a different style or something, but I'm not going to buy glasses every week. We spoke about changing his content, adding more content that's valuable, how to care for your glasses, how to repair them, how to organically improve your vision, offer that value, but also do a little bit of selling in email if you need to or have to, or not, you know, every now and then, not at all. Hopefully that helped. Uh, I know that we have... Um, some more in the q a too as well uh, peely uh what was the name of that audio um are you talking about that TikTok. video from tiktok i think he meant the tiktok yeah i'm gonna have to look that up i'll get that in a second what it is the animated picture website uh, oh off offer -O, i think it is right o-f-f-e-r-o -E and i know you put a link in there for that i think yep you did all and right then, i use eye contact clear you're not using all the features so lynn we have a bunch of help articles we have our support team we're creating more and more videos on how to use the different features. I just created one on landing pages, just waiting for that to go through the approval process. We want to do more webinars like this that are focused on uh, the features as well. I started a series that's infrequent right now, but we'll get back to a good frequency called Walkthrough Wednesdays. I'm going to go live on YouTube and Facebook. And we're going to go over specific elements of the um, 
of the, the platform. So stay tuned for that. Follow us on the socials and you know, all that. Just way you know what's coming. I'm not sure how you found out about today's webinar, but if you found out through any one of our channels, you'll find out about Walk Through Wednesday. Um, do you see the questions, Peel? If you can ask that first one, I'm going to look up that TikTok for account. For Q&A? Like yeah, anonymous attendee. Do you oh. also delete the information from my contact if they mark they no longer want to see my emails? All right. Um, so that was from somebody, somebody anonymous. Um, there's a couple of different ways people can get off your lists. They can unsubscribe. They can mark themselves, do not contact, or there's the ability to totally nuke it for GDPR. And that's something that cannot be undone, but it depends on what your question really means. Um, you want to know who they drop, but we take care of that. In other words, if they unsubscribe from a list, you cannot send to them. If, you know, if they're on that list, they won't be anymore. If they mark themselves, do not contact, you cannot send it to them at all. And then also if for some reason they say, I want to be deleted, I want all my information gone, there is a red button that you can press in there that permanently removes them and it cannot be undone. Hopefully that answers that. Uh, where do I find a place to add the personalization to the email? Dear your name. So in iContact, in the editor, there's a merge field. It looks like two brackets. Drop that in and you choose the field, like first name. Then you put a comma after the last bracket. So it'd be open bracket, first name, close bracket, comma. You can also use custom fields there as well. If you add somebody's favorite color, right, and you get that from a form or whatever, you can say, I know your favorite color is favorite color, and, can, and it could put green in there, whatever you want. Marty says, what was the stock video company you mentioned? There's there's a lot of them. There is um, Video Blocks. It's also called Story Blocks. Just the same company, different names. Um, Camtasia, I think, has it. Adobe Stock has it. There's a lot out there, and I believe, like, Pixabay has some free ones. Pexels might have some free ones. I'd avoid the free ones for videos unless they're really good. Uh, but I would say, check it out. Just search for, you know, video, stock video and see what other companies are out there. Canva, I think, offers some, especially their pro version. I highly recommend their pro version. It's so worth it, especially for a small business owner. All right, there's Dave. He's asking us... Uh, do we just use eye contact stats or need Google? It depends. Um, so when you send an email, you can add parameters. We do it automatically to your email links that go into Google Analytics and tell you that they came from a particular email or email in general. And especially if you're an e-commerce company, you can tell how much money you made off of each email or from email in that given month. Then when you call in to complain about how much money you're making, we're going to call you on it. No, I'm just kidding. Because um, email marketing offers one of the best ROIs or return on investment. But yes, you can basically say source eye contact medium email. And if you go into Google Analytics and you search for medium of email, you can see how much traffic people, uh, how, many, how many people came to your website from email, from a specific email by using the campaign name, whole bunch of different things. Happy to talk about that if necessary. Uh, Lynn again, uh, videos. And then Lynn learned about through an email. So yes, you should be getting more emails about Walkthrough Wednesday. Um, definitely gonna make sure we send those out but we appreciate you being here, Lynn. Uh, Melissa says, is there a way to add a new theme from the themes available on eye contact? Well, the themes are buildable. In other words, what's there, um, you can go in and tweak that and save that as a new theme. Uh, it, it, I don't know what you mean by add, but you can't add your own. We are making some changes down the road to the way themes are handled. So stay tuned there. Um, is there a way to add new themes and save? So um, when you're creating an email, there is this on the right-hand side, you'll see a themes section. You can go in there and set your colors, set your fonts, set your font sizes, padding, all that, and save that as a new theme for email. So yes, that is available. And I'm going to go back through the chat and the questions. Any other questions? We are right on time. If not, what do you think of today's webinar? Was it, was it a thumbs up, thumbs down? Give me either, I don't think you could do emoji in uh in Zoom chat, but uh, let us know if this was helpful because we definitely want to make sure that we're helping you. And if you want to participate and get some stickers, it's webinars at iContact.com. Definitely send us some examples of what you're doing in iContact. Love to connect with you. First five people to do that, I'll send you a bunch of stickers. Uh, with that, I don't see any new questions. Uh, oh, one more came in from Sharon. Adding the recipient's first name 
what wasn't your subject? Oh, you could do it in a subject line or the email or the preheader. Say, take your pick. I just wouldn't do it in all three because that's kind of creepy. It's like you're stalking me. <laughs> do it in the subject line to get the attention. And you can do it as the opening, depending on what type of business you're in. Hank, comma, these new sneakers are great. You're going to look great on your next webinar. Oh, wait, they can't see your feet. But hey, save anyway, right? Something like that. As usual, we love doing this type of content for you. You should also receive a survey asking how well this webinar went today. And we ask you what other content you might want to see. And you know what? The next webinar title might be something that you recommended. With that, make sure to follow us on social media. Try eye contact if you don't currently have an account. Otherwise, Thank you for using eye contact. Peely, it was wonderful. Appreciate you doing this with me today. Thank you. Take it easy, everybody. Have a great rest of your week.